Welcome to the O Scene. I'm Jacqueline Twag. In Orange County, there's always something to do. Look to your own neighborhood or a surrounding city. Time to check out the people, places, and events taking place on the O Scene. In two cities, they're serving food for a purpose. Starting in Stanton, the mayor's prayer breakfast is filled with inspiration and an uplifting message. Next in Fountain Valley, the taste of Fountain Valley is a foodie's dream spot. And all the money raised goes to help the school district. The full story is coming up. Stay tuned for other recent happenings in Fountain Valley, Huntington Beach, Stanton, and Westminster. The Stanton community comes together for an early morning celebration. Let us pray. Stanton's ninth annual Mayor's Prayer Breakfast was a morning of allegiance. I pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America. Patriotism. What so proudly we hail at the twilight's last gleaming. And inspiration. Ladies and gentlemen, it's my honor to introduce to you Jamie Nieto. Keynote speaker and two-time track Olympian and actor, Jamie Nieto, shares his story. I watched myself jump over 7-7. And I told my friend as I was doing visualization out on the practice apron, I said, watch this, man. I'm going to jump over the bar. And I kind of jumped into the bar and I stood on the other side and I like tapped the bar and it like wobbled. And I said, I'm going to jump the bar and the bar is going to wobble and it's going to stay on. Watch this. Jamie's visualization preparation worked. I'm having an amazing competition. I jumped seven, six and a half, and I'm in the lead, and I'm looking to try to win the Olympic trials in my hometown of Sacramento. The bar goes to seven, seven. There's another competitor. He jumps, he misses. I jump, and I make it, and the bar wobbles. <laughs> <laughs> this is one of the jewels Jamie shares. After making it to one Olympic game, years later, he still had the drive to compete. God bless me with him. 35 years old, the first American high jumper at 35 years old to make an Olympic team. <laughs> but it, I attribute that to obviously having faith but these three things. I changed my thoughts, I changed the way I spoke to myself, I visualized more, and I was proactive about achieving and receiving my goals. After retiring, Jamie coached athletes. As part of celebrating, he'd do backflips. One of those backflips left him paralyzed. Not accepting this, he continues to fight. I've had a lot of friends that have come together to help me with what's going on with me now, with my accident. My wife is a powerful person in my life that helps to motivate me and push me to getting to new levels within my recovery. And it's just been a blessing to be able to have that support behind you because everybody needs support, you know, no matter what it is you do and to make it at a certain level, you got to have a team, you know. I think today's uh, breakfast that we had was symbolic of not only the residents that live here, but the businesses and also the people that live in our community. Uh, the story that we got today from our speaker, uh, Mr. Nieto, was something that I think we can all relate to uh, as we go through our lives. The message that God's blessed us, um, no matter where we're at, um, God's blessed us, and that He loves us, and that He's already done some miraculous things for us, so the message to them is be thankful for what God's done. Thank you so much for having us here. We're very excited. Um, I'm Alan Garcia. This is the Magnolia High School Chamber Singers, um, representing Magnolia High School. Thank you. Magnolia High School Choir, also part of the program, uplifting and engaging the audience.
just amazing when we get to be around people that have this calling to help other people and inspire other people. And, you know, I like to do that through my music. So just being here in that environment and this environment today is amazing. So I know great things for this community with all everyone that was here today for sure. Among the great things coming from this event is where the money goes. It's a fundraising event for the Stanton Community Foundation. City Council member and president of the foundation, Brian Donahue, explains. The foundation is, was set up to help those people in our community that needed help, both youth and adults. So we have several programs for young people, programs for the elderly, and it all comes together to make a better community because they're focused on happy things and making their life a lot, a lot better for them. The mayor shares what he believes people will leave this event with. It kind of gives us some hope for the future. Uh, it also gives us a good feeling and a sense of warmth that uh, we realize the gifts that we have received as a community and that we've been very thankful for those gifts. It's all about kids and community in Huntington Beach, along with allowing children's imagination to soar. In Huntington Beach, the children's library area was abuzz with activity, bright eyes, and eager readers. The 30th annual Authors Festival underway. After visiting local schools, they visited here to have more one-on-one -on -one time. Well, my children um, have Authors Day, and so somebody comes to their school, it reads aloud to them. There's a big lunch where some kids are invited to come participate with the authors, which is very exciting. So it's just an opportunity for my kids to interact with these authors and hear what it takes to write a book or do illustrations. My daughter's working on a little book. Um, she's fascinated with time machines and keeps asking Santa Claus for one and doesn't get one. So she's going to write a story about how she got a time machine. So it's really fun. It really gets the imagination going. Author Tony Gallagher is a tween author and former reality television executive producer who prefers this realm of work. Today I was at a school, I did uh, an assembly for 5th and 6th graders and then 7th and 8th graders and to see that reaction is really great and to inspire kids to write and read is a great thing to do. Sparking the imagination is the purpose of this and why volunteers are so passionate about the program. To interact with kids, let them ask questions, see that that's what makes it special and rewarding is the interaction like this, talking to the authors and the kids and bring them to the library and that's what's most rewarding. We hope it inspires the future authors and I, I think, I hope it has, I hope it will. I'd love to hear stories of successes. Authors themselves have stories to share as to what led them to their calling. Sherry Fink was in online marketing dealing with adversity at work when an idea blossomed leading her to her first book. And the seed of an idea came to me about a rose that grows up in a weed bed and thinks that she's the weed. And then it wrote through me in the car. I was living in Orange County at the time, commuting to work when I was still in the corporate world. And the idea just flowed through me from the very first words of the story to the very end. And I had never had anything like that happen to me before. I didn't even know it was a children's book. A year later, took it out, looked at it. Someone said they got goosebumps. They had more people read it. They kept saying they got goosebumps. And I thought, you know what? What if it's a children's book? What if I could help kids believe in themselves so strongly that they would be unstoppable? And Sherry has, through all of her books in her whimsical world. Husband Derek Taylor Kent, also a children's author, meets young readers at events throughout the year. But this one is special. This is where the future writers of the world come. The kids come here who have won awards for their writing and they are very serious about it and love it and are inspired by it. And by meeting new authors, now their favorite authors, it takes it to a whole nother level. Getting a book autographed by Derek in his Scary School series was the highlight for seven-year-old Trevor. They're really funny, they have monsters in them, they're really fun to read, and I like them. The writing and illustrating contest also taking place for pre-K through eighth grade students, awarding 36 students in all out of more than 260 entries. Many repeat winners. So this is Sara Charlu, and she gets best overall illustration in pre-kindergarten for Let's Go Save the World. This is Katherine Harris and her children's first year attending the festival. We just moved here, um, and I just think that it's such a beautiful library, and the fact that they have such a great event um, 
here and able just to come down here after school and my kids are avid readers as well as I am and um, it's so great for them to be able to see illustrators and authors in person. I like re reading and I think it's special because you get to imagine what they look like even though you there's no pictures. Delaney is good at using her imagination to picture the characters in her books. But for younger ones, author and illustrator P. Marin brings the animals to life. She shares how her Pig and Chick series came to be. It took a while. It took me a long time to get confident. I mean, I knew nothing, and so I had to Google how to watercolor, and, and I had to learn everything, and, and once I had um, characters in mind, I went to a farm, I started looking at how pigs and chickens actually move because you need to, it's one thing to draw a pig, you know, from the front, it's another thing to have him moving throughout the, the book and so I had to learn how they moved and, and so I sat at the farm sketching and, and once I was able to get something that I felt happy with, then I, I put it out into the world. As far as why P. Marin does what she does? Somebody asked me the other day if I'd had much success being an author. And what I told them was, I haven't sold enough books to change my life, but the people I've met have. And so to me, I'm hugely successful, and this is why I like to come to these events, to meet all the different people, because this is a community of people that, that care. This year, 22 authors made their rounds to 18 public and private local schools who requested their appearance. By the way, the Friends of the Children's Library sponsored this festival as they do many other events throughout the year. Another event, this one involves food and funds going to a good cause helping the Fountain Valley School District. All right, with the two tacos for you, sir, right there. Taste of Fountain Valley. where you get a sampling of 30 local restaurants. There you go. Thank you so much. Have a bit of beer and wine if you wish. And it literally does leave no trace in your mouth. What does that taste like? It tastes like gold. Gold. Listen to good music. <laughs> and help make a difference in the community. We bought lots of tickets. We're hoping to win. There's been fantastic concessionaires here tonight. Basically gives directly back to programs, uh, which are the science programs, technology, music instruction, musical instruments, art programs. Um, it, it's basically all the STEM and STEAM programs. This event is one of the Fountain Valley Schools Foundation's biggest fundraisers, raising funds for the Fountain Valley School District. It's extremely exciting. There are 10 schools in the Fountain Valley School District, and uh, there are just about 6,500 kids that are in the Fountain Valley School District. And to be part of something this big that benefits the community um, and all the children, children are our future, so to be a part of something like that is it's, it's awesome. Principal of Talbert Middle School, Jennifer Morgan, is here to sample food and support. For three years now, we've had an actual full-time music teacher, um, which we haven't had in the past for quite some time. So there's a lot of students that benefit from that. And then we're also a STEAM school. We have a STEAM academy, so robotics and engineering and technology are all very important things to our school. Jennifer, along with her group of friends, are enjoying an evening of mixing and mingling and tasting. For you, sir, garlic mashed potatoes? all while giving back. I was just eating some stone fire, but I'm gonna go back and try some of the other restaurants in the area. So it's a great evening to see some friends from the community and get out and support our schools. Fountain Valley School District Superintendent Dr. Mark Johnson feels fortunate to have such a welcoming community backing their mission. We want it to be a win-win for everybody. So while um, obviously we're the school district and the foundation and that's a great partnership, these are new businesses. Some of them come out for the first time and some of them aren't even local. They're outside of our city boundaries. But they come in and uh, people get to taste their food and then they get an experience too where they can uh, possibly go out on a date with their wife or their friends. And uh, I think it's a win-win for the whole community. We have an agreement with the Coca-Cola company. So this is coca fruit Cherry Coke. And we're gonna put it right in our samples right here. Take Tropic Cream, this is a non-dairy southern sweet cream. Put a little bit right on top. Come by and try it. So this is all go down to invest into our future. 
but at the same time you have a chance to meet out your, your neighbor. Uh, I have so, met so many people that, that I haven't seen for a long time. And then this is the night that we go out here uh, sampling 30 different restaurants, the best restaurant in Orange County, but at the same time do something for our local school and that's the spirit of Fountain Valley. What we've got here, this is penne alla vodka with chicken and vegetables. And then my dessert over here are caramel pecan squares. We saw this, we thought it'd be something different and to try it out. We've never been before. I understand that this is not the first year. I didn't know that. But uh, I thought it would be something different and fun to try. Just to see my friends and fellowship and help support the cause. And just the, to, to try out this good food. <laughs> I found some really good. It's called Sawai Fish, California Fish Grill. It's really, really good. Dr. Johnson explains how this event is set to only get bigger and better year after year. Los Caballeros is just such a great partner to let us put, put it here at this facility. Um, we've been at the Senior Center for years, and the capacity was probably 180 to 200. And this year, I think we're going to be probably well over 350. And so it gives us the opportunity, one, to have a great event outdoors, it's beautiful, and then two, to keep growing. Donors, sponsors, and volunteers all have come together to make this a memorable event where people can have great food, no, you can't watch me either. share a great time, and connect with their friends and neighbors. If you want more information on the Fountain Valley Schools Foundation, you can visit their website at fvschools.org. Taste of Fountain Valley made more than $20,000. Now for some European flavor. We're traveling to a special part of Huntington Beach for a taste of artisan-made crafts and treats. Old World Village is busy with activity. Artists selling their wares, vendors meeting and mingling with people strolling through, and music resonating throughout the village. Gives me the green of summer. Make you think all the world is a sunny day, oh yeah. This thanks to a new monthly event that benefits a good cause. Both my parents passed away two years apart of Alzheimer's. I was their caregiver for eight years, so I founded this foundation 12 years ago because I thought there was something needed to be done. As CEO, Marco Rabbits is raising money with these ongoing events to bring awareness and research to his foundation, the Johnny O Foundation. We have doctors, UCLA is one of our partners in brain research for uh, TBI awareness, traumatic brain injury, uh, for both the Department of Defense and also for uh, sports. His vision for Old World and the Johnny O Show? I'm seeing a revitalization of this place. I think that it's gone through a cycle where that it's really known every year just for the Oktoberfest. And now we're going to start making this a 12 month a year situation. It's very exciting. He had approached me about, uh, I want to say, when I first was moving in and said, hey, we have this great event. And I thought, well, how perfect, because um, I actually started my business doing these kinds of events. We had pop-up shops downtown Huntington Beach. We participated in the 4th of July Festival. And I thought, what a perfect venue for this. The grounds are great. And so it'll drive uh, business to the businesses that are here, which I think is they're ready for it. Ten-year-old John came here with his mom and his aunt. He wanted to share with us his experience. I like Old World because it's nice just to walk around and see all the variety of things. And today they have, it's an extra special day. They have vendors here and they have a huge variety of things and it's really nice to come here with family. Jennifer Galambos has been a drag racer for more than 15 years. She explains how she created a business based out of a pastime she loves. It's becoming more and more prevalent to see more women drag racing, especially in, in the higher end NHRA and whatnot. Um, but there's just still not the clothing out there. And being a woman, I've noticed that there just really isn't anything that I really liked. So I decided to create my own clothing line um, to kind of help the hobby along a little bit, especially for us women. Mara Ducati is from Senegal and travels there often. He works directly with families who make these baskets and crafts and brings them back here to sell. Trust me, it takes a lot of time. So when you see one of those big baskets you see there, it might take three to five days to have finished one. 
But the thing is, when you see in the closer picture is that when you, you find these families and women who are sitting under a tree, just making these baskets, but you can feel the love and the passionness that they take to make those baskets with songs, with drumming, with dancing, you know, and, and you, 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 when, when it's finished, you realize the beauty of the baskets, but what's behind the baskets, the love is made out of it, make it more interesting than you want to just even have it in your house. Well, that's what Old World was all about originally. There were it was supposed to be all craft shops. So I still make harnesses for little dogs. So I, I'm one of the few left that really does things like this. We have a lot of services now, but this is a perfect addition to Old World, having all the crafters here. Crafters and a farmer's market. Well, farmer's market, like, so awesome to support local. First of all, get some fresh organic produce and goodies and, and support Old World, who's been an establishment in, in Huntington Beach for years and years, almost 40 years, I think. And Heather Upstone is also supporting the brick and mortar establishments that sell yummy sweet treats. Just the village and the different like shop owners here, they have some amazing um, pastries in the little shops and um, we got a bunch of those as well. And uh, it's just it's just a really great vibe here. It's just you come here and you just feel love. It's just a nice ambience and just just like 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 a mini Europe uh, in like Huntington Beach. Without actually going to Europe, we can get that feel from the food perspective and also from the whole like the ambience. So I think it's it's a very unique place in its own way. So that's what we like about it. This is an amazing event. I'm here to eat the chocolate, homemade, fresh. You guys got to come down here. From homemade to handcrafted, there's something for everyone's taste. If you want to check this out, just come the first weekend of every month to Old World Village. Once you go for the art show, you'll probably want to make a return trip and check out all the little quaint shops as well. Well, that's all for now, but we hope you'll be inspired to go out and explore all of the experiences awaiting you. Until next time, I'm Jacqueline Twaig for The O-Scene.